When AEW Fight Forever got released, we were all expecting something that harkened back to the glory days of wrestling video games. Fight Forever does indeed feel like an older wrestling game and you can definitely see what they were aiming for, but it also felt that something was missing. For sure, the game does feel like an evolution of the old Aki engine in many ways, but you can also tell it didn't grab people the same way simply due to the fact that hardly no one talks about it. Sometimes it's just better to keep your expectations in check and go back to the originals, and those original N64 wrestling games from Aki are games I still revisit often to this very day. Luckily for me, I'm not the only one who returns to those good old days. There's a thriving community out there who still love these games, and there's those who take that love to the next level. I'm of course talking about those who spend their free time to mod those old games. Over the years, we have seen some tremendous mods of the Aki classics, but let me tell you something, Mean Gene, I have never played anything like the game I'm about to show you today. To call this thing just a mod would actually be an incredible disservice. WWF Legends Challenge 64 is built on WWF No Mercy. The original WWF Legends project that Challenge 64 evolved from was founded by three people, Ico Tracks, FTWJME and Orson, and to credit everyone else who contributed to this project would eat up about 5 minutes of video time. But what you're going to see today is a community effort. A lot of people helped on this and they continue to help on this in some way, shape or form, and it shows us that when fans come together for big projects, absolutely wonderful things can happen. So before moving on, a big thank you to everyone who worked on this game. I've been following the WWF Legends Twitter page for a little while now, and the moment I saw screenshots of Challenge 64 in development, it immediately grabbed my attention. The team had worked on mods named WWF Legends in the past, but Challenge 64 takes all that previously acquired experience to give players a new game that feels very, very complete. I reached out to the guys to ask some questions for this very video, and it quickly became apparent to me that a lot of hard work and dedication was put into this project. Now, to get it out of the way, and for those of you who may be unaware, Challenge 64 will not run on original hardware. The game uses high resolution textures, it features a completely new MP3 soundtrack, and it relies on specific plugins in order to run, so this game must be emulated on your PC. The game also runs well on the ROG Ally by the way, so keep that in mind if you want a handheld experience. The game is free, you don't need to pay anyone to play Challenge 64, however the guys have a Patreon page set up where you can support the project while also getting new updates, new attires, general patches before everyone else, and you can also talk to the guys and suggest new updates for characters in the game. So after you see the work that's gone into Challenge 64 in this video, and it is a lot, please consider visiting the guys on Patreon, the link will be in this video description. Installation of the game will be tricky for new users, but there's a ton of useful help files located in the download folder. Look at these carefully and don't skip over anything. With this in mind, I still ran into some issues when installing the game and I had a lot more luck putting the folders directly on my C drive to work properly and I also ran into some small quirks while playing the game, but you have to remember that these things can and will happen when dealing with emulation and ROMs that have been altered. Your own PC setup may have issues that other users don't have and that's something we have to deal with. As mentioned though, there are files in there to help you get started, so take your time and look over these carefully. Let's take a look at the main menu and <laughs> look at this, this is wonderful. You'll notice the stars around the border that call back to the WWF games on NES and listen to the music, it's an updated version of the WrestleMania Challenge chip tune. Challenge 64 actually gets its name from the old NES game by the way. Even within the menus here, you can tell that this isn't just a quick edit of No Mercy. Everything's been built from the ground up and this seriously helps Challenge 64 set itself apart from your more typical mods and hacks. This is really just the tip of the iceberg though because check out the wrestler select screen. I smiled from ear to ear when I first saw this on my PC. The team have really captured that 80s feel and vibe throughout the whole menu system, but the character select screen is really something special. The large character portraits look amazing, the background looks amazing, it's really really good. 
Our roster consists of superstars of the 80s and 90s. We've got Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Randy Savage, Ted DiBiase, Ultimate Warrior, Jake Roberts, Demolition, Roddy Piper, Mr. Perfect, Brutus the Barber Beefcake, Ravishing Rick Rude, The Big Boss Man, Honky Tonk Man, The Undertaker, The Heart Foundation, Earthquake, Rick Martel, Davy Boy Smith, Bam Bam Bigelow, The Rockers, Haku, The Powers of Pain, Dusty Rhodes, Junkyard Dog, King Kong Bundy, Big John Studd, Hercules, Kamala, Razor Ramon, Zeus, IRS, Virgil, Ron Bass and a small selection of job guys. Managers in the game include Bobby Heenan, Jimmy Hart, Miss Elizabeth, Mr. Fuji, Sensational Sherry, Slick, Paul Bear, Kim Chi and Brother Love. If all this isn't enough, each character has a ton of attires, and not only do these attires change the look of your wrestler, but they also change your wrestler's entrance and moveset. So for example, 80s Rick Rude and 90s Rick Rude pull off different variations of the Rude Awakening. And it's this that makes Challenge 64 so special, this level of detail and all these small things coming together to give you a little holy shit moments. The Raw Rumble and King of the Ring modes give the player a completely new character select screen with the Raw Rumble having those classic Rumble portraits and the King of the Ring featuring action shots. And as you can see, the character models look absolutely brilliant. This is not a new coat of paint over an old game by the way. Certain models such as Jake Roberts, Honky Tonk Man and Roddy Piper were given brand new body types not found in any other Aki game. There's no mirroring going on either with head textures, so for example the Warlord has his correct two toned mohawk, and guys like Jim Neidhart and Mr Fuji have their trademark facial hair and beards. All this comes together really well and it makes the game feel really authentic. You can now relive your favourite matches of the past or play matches you could only only wish happened all those years ago. Right, before we get into match presentation and gameplay, I want you to have a listen to this. Shivani, don't you get out of line with me, because I wrestled, you're the man responsible for Bobby Heenan getting run off the air. That is incredible. We have commentary in an N64 wrestling game. And guess what? Tony Schiavone and Jesse Ventura aren't the only commentators in Challenge 64. Monsoon and Heenan are in here. McMahon and Ventura is another combination along with Ventura and Monsoon. We even have Sean Mooney and Lord Alfred Hayes calling the action. It's really something special. What you're hearing here are carefully curated audio lines from wrestling shows of the past. The guys who put these commentary tracks together took time to select lines and portions of commentary that aren't specific to what's going on in the ring. And it works. It works really, really well. Monsoon and Ventura argue among themselves while watching your match. Attention. Give me a break, Jess. How come you don't believe everything I tell you? Because uh, sometimes you're a fountain of misinformation. Never. I'm the man who tells it like it is. Mooney and Hayes talk about not getting paid as well as Heenan and Monsoon. But I'm still sure that Bobby Heenan gets paid for it. Yeah, I was going to say it wasn't a charitable move on the brains part. And the gorilla's not far behind him, you know. He likes a few pants in the pocket too. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, he never picks up a tag of the <laughs> it's so much fun listening to these guys having these conversations while playing the game and it leaves you wanting more. I really do hope the guys working on the game can somehow add more of these commentary tracks in the future. It's one of those things that really makes Challenge 64 stand out. Before we dig into gameplay, let's take a look at match presentation and how the game generally looks. You can wrestle in quite a few arenas, we've got Superstars of Wrestling, Madison Square Garden, Saturday Night's Main Event, WrestleMania 5 in Trump Plaza, SummerSlam 89 from the Meadowlands Arena, Survivor Series 89 from the Rosemont Horizon, Royal Rumble 1993 inside the Knickerbocker Arena, WrestleMania 3 in the Pontiac Silverdome, Wrestling Challenge and finally the London Arena, home of the WWF UK Rampage shows in 89 and 1990. 
Each venue has its very own entranceway and ring apron. Some even have ceiling banners and different colour schemes for ring steps and mats placed on the outside. Take a look at the audience too and you might see some familiar faces including superfan Vladimir, though I'll leave it to you to see who else you can spot in this crowd. Backstage fighting is also possible, not every area is complete just yet, but more familiar faces are standing by in the corridor including Shane McMahon, Stephanie McMahon and a certain hardcore legend. Arena selection is more than just looks, the arena you select determines your commentary team and it also has an effect on which cage gets used in steel cage encounters. And it looks as though we are about to get underway. Playing a match in Challenge 64 will feel very familiar to those well acquainted with the old N64 games. That addictive and familiar gameplay is back in all its glory but now you've got yourself an all star roster from the superstars of yesterday and it all just looks so gloriously old school yet still incredibly fresh. As mentioned earlier, and I need to repeat this, this is not a new coat of paint on an old game. These models and attires have been carefully put together to make this the most complete Legends game available and that includes releases from WWE 2. But the team behind Challenge 64 didn't stop at how the game looks and the guys you can select, oh no. We have brand new moves that were built from the ground up, moves that were specifically animated and tailored towards individual wrestlers. Ted DiBiase's million dollar dreams in the game. Dusty Rhodes can pull off the flip flop and fly. Just deluged here by cameramen and newspaper reporters from all over the entire world wanting to cover this event. We even have an updated, much better leg drop for Hulk Hogan. Mr. Fuji's out here throwing salt in people's eyes for crying out loud. And we also have new basic animations for basic moves that don't require your finishing meter to be flashing. If for some reason you're still not impressed, the team also worked on changing the mechanics of certain matches. In a steel cage, for example, the door will open when your opponent's in the danger state, allowing you to step out and win the match if you're quick enough. This is something that wasn't available in No Mercy. Coffin or casket matches have been added too. A casket opens up at ringside when your opponent's health meter is in the danger state and it's your job to throw your opponent in to win the match. Granted, things are in the early stages in regards to how the casket looks and whatnot, but the fact that a whole new match type's been added to the Aki engine completely blows my mind. You've also got ladder matches here that uses new ladder graphics, Iron Man matches, 2 out of 3 falls, special referee, tag team, 3 way and handicap matches. And you've also got Royal Rumble and King of the Ring modes. So remember I said earlier that I had some issues running the game? Well, I want to show you some of those issues just to show that problems can and probably will arise. Though do keep in mind that this is the first release of the game and things can and will get better from this point on. You may have noticed some small glitches or graphical hiccups during this video, but here's a few that stood out for me. On the character select screen, I got a photo of Chris Jericho's Titantron in place of Paul Bear's portrait. With Razor Ramon, I got a photo of Steve Blackman's Titantron. Those who follow this channel will understand why I laughed my ass off when seeing this, but these issues were quickly rectified by restarting the game. It still happens every so often, so I need to double check the help files and see what I might be missing. In the Raw Rumble select screen, the character models had these smaller portraits placed over them. It was a minor annoyance, but this was fixed by moving the Challenge 64 folders directly onto the C drive on my PC. Again, I could be missing something very simple here, but moving the files fixed this little problem. During a Royal Rumble match, I found some hidden, incomplete wrestlers. Akeem made an appearance during the Royal Rumble and I could tell this was unfinished due to the lack of polish on the character and the fact that his name was in the No Mercy font. And then the Iron Sheik entered the Royal Rumble and <laughs> yeah, he's not finished at all. These Royal Rumble entrants were in no way game breaking and I actually got a kick out of seeing Akeem. I thought I might have found a hidden unlockable or something, but these models are not finished and hopefully a future update can either add the characters or remove them completely. 
There's other little glitches going on, of course, but nothing that made my game crash. And hey, it's very easy to forget that this wasn't developed by a studio or a team with a lot of funding behind it, because look at it, it looks so freaking good. So always keep in mind that this was put together by fans, very talented fans who clearly have a passion for old school wrestling. As it stands right now, there's no career or season mode in Challenge 64, but there are plans to bring a fully fledged single mode experience to the game in the future, and that's gonna be title mode. Creation mode also doesn't work right now, the option is there though, so fingers crossed that this gets added in the future. How this will be accomplished, I have no idea. It'll take a lot of work I'm sure to add hundreds of textures for creator wrestler pieces, but it would seem the idea was there or it's being planned in the future. For now, you're going to be playing exhibition matches, but trust me, if you appreciate this era of pro wrestling, then you're going to have an absolute blast. And yeah, I'm going to say it, right now, I prefer playing Challenge 64 over AEW's Fight Forever. Challenge 64 is a game made by fans for the fans, a tribute to the golden era that not even the WWE were able to achieve in a fun way through video games. And seeing as I'm an old head who has a real soft spot for this generation of pro wrestling, I just see myself playing Challenge 64 a whole lot more than the other wrestling games that are currently on offer. Remember too, with how I run the Wrestling Bios channel, I don't get that much free time to sit down and play games for hours on end. With Challenge 64, I can put it on, pick a wrestler, see what new moves and new animations have been added for the character while looking over the attires, play a few matches and then I can get back to work. So these older style of wrestling games suit me way way more. If I'm working on a video however that's all about a specific game then that's a different story. That gives me loads of time to really play the game and get to grips with everything that's on offer. But for something I can play for an hour here or there, Challenge 64 is pretty much perfect. There's so much to like about this game, the menu system, the character select, the commentary, the attires that are available, the arenas, the new animations and moves, how the team updated things like cage matches and even added a new match type. I honestly can't say enough good things about Challenge 64 and I sincerely hope development continues on and I hope more people take the time out to play the game. The only hurdle I can see with Challenge 64 from a newbie standpoint is actually getting the game to run, but again, use those help files and double check everything. There's even some helpful videos available on YouTube right now from RGT85 and the ROM hack database that'll help you on a step by step basis. That's gonna do it for today's video and I hope I've shown you enough footage here to leave you with a good impression of Challenge 64. Patches and updates are still in the works, new attires and new artwork are currently available on Challenge 64's Patreon page. This is really only the beginning for this game and I legitimately can't wait to see what's next. I honestly haven't been this excited for a wrestling game in a very long time. Remember to check this video description for links, let me know what matches you're going to play in Challenge 64 in the comments section, let me know what you like about the game and things you'd like to see added in the future, and as always, take care. Thanks for watching guys.